Teddy Covers, thank you for joining us on this Monday morning. How you doing? Oh, man. I mean, what a weekend, dude. Uh, I am recovering from a whole lot of insanity over the last uh, 72 hours. Uh, but we had a good weekend. Uh, I made money. My clients made money. Nothing but smiles uh, on a Monday morning. But, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, Monday morning's fire time. Uh, and, of course, uh, after, a, you know, a grueling weekend, you know, sometimes you got to... <laughs> Uh, here, the, the, the caffeine's on full display this morning. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. It was a, I had a very, very fun Saturday that turned into a, a very anger-filled Sunday. But Saturday was wonderful, and it was fun. And I feel like I can improve. I can improve with getting at attacking certain games earlier like the Ohio State game, like the Louisville game where you were on those spots, but you got in early. And, and then as I waited watching the line move up, I ended up staying off. In fact, it could have been a monstrous Saturday. I went 11-6 and six on Saturday. That's what losing my last two games. I was 11-4 and four going into my last two games. So uh, I was 12-15 and 15 with the record. We'll pop that uh, record back up, Rafa. We're now 23 and 22, uh, just down 0 0.7 units, but we... Oh, no, no, that's my horrible NFL record. Uh, we're talking NCAA football. Uh, that was an 0-3 <laughs> on Sunday. That was very uh, irritating, Rafa, throwing that in my face one more time. Uh, NCAA record, 23-22, 0 0.70 units. It's, I'm very uh, excited. It, I, I had, you know, and I was saying, Teddy, I had as much fun on Saturday with all the games going on. Now it helps, you know, with, like, with Pittsburgh plus the points and the under and getting off to a nice winning start. It makes it more fun when you're not chasing. But I, I had so much fun watching all these games on Saturday. And I thought we all did excellent, excellent work. And that's you all, I should say, really. I was just listening and making moves. Uh, I'm excited about this card. But first off, Teddy, the chat needs to know, are you making a move on this Monday nighter? I know that you gave everything out for the Browns minus two and a half. And because I didn't get to bet that, I don't want the Browns at minus six and a half or seven just because the anger that I'll have if, 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 you know, they cover the two and a half but not the six and a half or seven. Are you making a move on the total? I you know, so I'm, I'm holding the two and a half in my pocket. I got down on Cleveland early last week thinking that line was likely to move to three. So I got the two and a half. I got it at my minus 110. Uh, so I didn't have to lay any juice with it because it was fairly early in the week. And then obviously after the, uh, Sam Darnold situation. And it's not just Darnold. I mean, the Jets have multiple defenders out. Their wide receiving core is banged up. New York is not uh, a healthy team going into tonight's game. But the two and a half is in my pocket. If I had to play the game now, and again, I don't have to play the game now, but if I had to play now, I would still lay with Cleveland. You know, I don't want the Jets tonight. Uh, I think the Browns are coming to play, and I think the Browns' A game is pretty darn good. Um, so uh, I would only take Cleveland, even at the. But uh, of course, if you have two and a half in your pocket, and the prevailing nine now is six and a half, you're not going to recommend. Hey, you know, go grab that six and a half. Um, so it's it's you know I, I took down the play, um, you know, and that sort of thing. I'm not. Uh, uh, I got the two and a half in, and that's all I want to do with this game. Total wise, I don't have a strong opinion. Part of me thinks that the Browns' defensive line is going to blow up the Jets up front, and part of me thinks that you know in a week of unders that this game has shootout potential. It's not like the Jets don't have playmakers, not like the Browns don't have playmakers. So I really have mixed feelings on the total. Uh, sideways at current number, again, I'm only looking at Cleveland here, but the price isn't right anymore. So, uh, you know, I laid the two and a half and I'll just hold it. Uh, if I see a seven, I might buy back on the Jets. Uh, and that's a might. I'm not even sure that I will. Uh, but I, I'm not convinced I'm going to see sevens today. The, the wise guys will jump in anytime they see a seven. You know, to be honest with you, knowing that Mosley's going to be out, I do. I have a slight lean to the over, although I'm pretty certain we're going to get a bounce back defensive effort from the Browns against an easy offense to defend without Darnold on it there. But but without Mosley, I feel like the Browns can put up points. And what do you think about this Browns defense? Do you think that was a do you think they're in a they're much, much better squad than we saw against Tennessee in week one? They were fine against Tennessee in week one. Don't be fooled for a minute by that final score. That game was 15 to 13 in the fourth quarter, you know, and then all of a sudden it's, you know, a pick six and a broken play. And next thing you know, it's a 43 to 13 final. Um, you know, that game was 15 to 13. Cleveland's defense is just, 
I believe in the Browns' defense. Certainly that front seven is elite. Uh, they're going to put a lot of pressure on opposing quarterbacks uh, this season. So, uh, I mean, again, I'm a Browns believer. So there's a lot of pro betters here in Vegas who aren't, which in a sense is a good thing because that means that Cleveland is not getting the wise guy support. And the teams that don't get the wise guy support tend to be a little bit overvalued if they're any good. So I think the Browns are good. I think that defense is good. That front seven is loaded. I mean, from a talent standpoint, if you grade out the Browns personnel, they're as good as any team in the league. You know, that's what happens when you have first, you know, you, you draft first for uh, first or second or third for, you know, 10 years in a row like Cleveland did. But you accumulate some talent if you draft reasonably well. And in recent years, they've done that. So I, I, I do believe I guess you're answering the question, do I believe in the Browns defense? The answer is yes. I do think Cleveland has a good defense and the uh, 43 points they that showed up on the scoreboard for Tennessee, not indicative at all uh, of what uh, Cleveland brings to the table on that side of the football. Yeah, no, that that makes sense. That's a that's a that's a strong answer. Uh, I I'm just at this point going to stay off. I I was very irritated for some reason. I guess I don't know. I can't explain what went on with me in NFL this week. I was just so pensive and just not trusting the the work that we were putting in. And and when we came all down, and when we had that big market move to the over in Atlanta, and then the Browns. I ended up, I was there Sunday morning and I got up quite early and I was, I, I had one bet and, and I should have just left it at that. You know, you don't, I was just, uh, it was a bad, bad weekend. And, and then sad, well, it was a good weekend. It was a plus, like I made money this weekend, but only because of college football. Let's get into college football right now. Teddy, the whole talk in this chat so far is take Wisconsin, back Wisconsin, back Wisconsin. The three and a half is not going to be here for long. Is this... Is this? Are we making uh, an error by by saying that Michigan is absolute trash, or is it the right move to make? Because the whole chat's on Wisconsin. What do you think about this big, big Mich Michigan Wisconsin spot? Uh, I think Michigan wins the game. I think Michigan's one of the best bets on the board, and I think you're absolutely you're. If you're looking to bet Wisconsin this week, you're looking at college football the wrong way, flat out. It's a flat out like you're not getting the concepts here. All right, this is what Wisconsin has done so far. Be blown out of Patsy, blown out of Patsy. Now they step up. This is what Michigan has done so far. Underachieved against, you know, the Army game, no big deal. Uh, I'm not, again, I'm not worried about that at all. Uh, the Army game. Week one, would they have the, the Mac school or whatever it was. Oh, Middle Tennessee, that's what it was. And Middle Tennessee moved the football against them. Don't buy any of that. Michigan is just fine. Michigan is better than Wisconsin. Michigan is better than Wisconsin on both sides of the football. Michigan can win on the road. Michigan can dominate the line of scrimmage. We don't trust the Badgers quarterback at all. We do trust the Wolverines quarterback. We're getting points here because, oh, Harbaugh, oh, Michigan. Michigan is better than Wisconsin, period. You'll see on Saturday. I can't tell you it's stronger than that. I mean, if you guys love Wisconsin, knock yourself out. But this is one that I feel pretty confident on on Monday morning. And I haven't put it in my pocket because I don't need to yet. <laughs> you know, I don't know. What's that line doing? I looked at it last night. I looked at it first thing this morning. What's that line doing right now? It's, it's at three and a half. And, and we're, we're expecting money to come in on Wisconsin just from reading the chat. But that's not happening. The, at Pinnacle, there's been a nine cent move towards Michigan at plus three and a half. And yeah. So I'm going to just, just, just so you know, I'm, I'm going to, when we get off the air, I'm going to bet that plus three and a half. I don't think it's going to be there. Uh, I will absolutely put that in my pocket on Monday morning. Wow. That's exciting. That's exciting stuff, man. Uh, Rich G says Wisconsin front seven will dominate. They will rush for over 200 yards. Harbaugh doesn't win big games, especially on the road. Bookie Lover Q says Michigan sucks. Tomino says Michigan is not better than Wisconsin. Patterson sucks, but Wisconsin has issues at quarterback too. Wow, what a what an exciting game to start this card off with. The yeah, whole exactly. chat on Wisconsin and Teddy says, "Do not do it, man." <laughs> that's uh, that's so fun. That's so fun. Well, no, we'll be talking okay, about Jimmy. this all week long. Let's get to that Thursday game because we're already seeing money coming on Tulane. Tulane opening at minus three, now at minus three and a half. Uh, of course, we don't have totals out on the Monday. What's your first feel on this Thursday night or Houston Tulane? So uh, this is one that I attracted a ton uh, of attention in chat last night. 
I know there were a lot of people out there looking to bet Tulane in this game who were very disappointed uh, in this point spread. You know, my powering number, and again, I'm fairly high on Tulane. My powering number only came one and a half uh, on this game with Tulane uh, favored. So I was hoping, <laughs> I was hoping I'd get a pick them, uh, but at a field goal and going up, I, I can I can understand the love for the green wave. And look, we saw Houston against Wazoo uh, last week. They played well enough to get in under the number, and that number was a little bit inflated. This is a very about the exact opposite offense that you could possibly face in a short turnaround situation. You know, in terms of what Fritz is doing at Tulane and compared to what they faced last week. The quarterback, Young, uh, King, I should say, uh, Derek King isn't uh, isn't 100 uh, percent of any stretch of the imagination. And Green Wave have been overachieving early on. They're a team, again, you know, way under the radar. But the wise guys had Tulane from last year and into this year saying, watch out for this squad. So, unfortunately, the price isn't right. But if I had to play it, Tulane's the play. Uh, but my number came out shorter, so it's not one that I'm about to get to the window with. Makes sense. We'll be keeping an eye on the Thursday nighter throughout. And then we come to Friday, and the big look is Utah USC. Utah USC USC upset by BYU. I did not trust USC on the road. That doesn't mean I took BYU. It's just a stay off game. I stayed off a lot of the big games and just focused on the games that I thought I had edges on. And, uh, God, I, I can't tell you how much fun I had on Saturday. Isn't winning fun? God, winning is fun. <laughs> and then losing is so horrifyingly uh, just, oh, man. The, the juxtaposition between my Saturday and Sunday, what a roller coaster ride. Uh, Utah, USC, USC opening at plus 3.5, at plus 100 at Pinnacle. They're now at plus 3.5 at minus 104. You think USC has a nice bounce back spot at home? This is a tough Utah squad. My number is Utah minus 7. Uh, wow. And if there's one team in college football you want on the road, it's the Utah Utes. Uh, you know, we talk about home field edge and all that sort of thing. The tougher teams tend to do well on the road in college football year in, year out. Utah has been one of those teams. They've been a great uh, road favorite. They've been a great road dog. And when we talk about, you know, what happened, this is BYU with back-to-back -back wins the last two weeks over Tennessee uh, and USC. Both of them wild games uh, coming down to the wire. Uh, and, you know, the coin flip, oh, BYU wins both of them. It doesn't change my opinion about BYU. Okay? BYU is still not a good team. Uh, defensively, they're okay. Offensively, they have nothing. Uh, and the fact that U uh, USC has given up points to that. I mean, Utah will be able to run the football in this game. I expect them to be able to move the football through the air as well. So the only question, whether Slovis the company is going to be able to trade points uh, with the Utes. Uh, I think Utah is going to get in the 30s uh, in this one. And frankly, <laughs> you know, uh, again, we saw the young QB show signs, and he has shown signs. But I don't like the mentality of this USC team. I don't like a young quarterback in his first start against an elite defense. And for me, that's a game where I'm, if I'm playing, I'm laying. It's Utah. And again, my number shows it uh, against the uh, point spread there. The uh, Utes are nothing for me. I do not trust USC to do a whole lot. Interesting. I like that look. Then we get to Air Force, Boise State. I have some questions coming in. I'm copying and pasting them. So anybody has a question for Teddy, let me know. Air Force, Boise State. We all laid off of Air Force in Colorado this past week. Uh, I had them plus three and a half. Dom Ricci eight on the money line. We were all over Air Force. They were down, I believe, 10-0 early and just stormed back. And the public's paying attention because, or the public, well, I shouldn't say who is paying attention at this point. It's plus nine and a half opener, and it's quickly gone down to eight in Boise State. Do you think Air Force is a good bet again this weekend? It's an interesting question. I mean, look, let, let's give the Falcons a whole lot of credit. And that game was not as close as it would indicate. Air Force dominated that game, but they made a bunch of mistakes, allowed Colorado to hang around and then tie the score uh, before they went into OT. But Air Force was a right side in that game. And from a point spread perspective, they dominated uh, ATS uh, in a way that, again, not fully reflected uh, in that final score. And Air Force is a good track record against Boise. They've beaten them three times in the last five years. Uh, however, zero times in the last two years, Boise with back-to-back -back, uh, wins over Air Force. And both times, the Broncos basically moved the football at will. They scored 44 and 48 against Air Force's defense. And, you know, part of me thinks that the Falcons' secondary is better. 
based on what happened against Colorado, where they were able to shut down the Buffs passing game for extended stretches in that ballgame. And if Air Force can do that, and that's a game I haven't thoroughly gone through the play-by-play. That's something on my agenda uh, for the next 24 hours. I want to really go through the play-by-play. Again, the box score is going to tell you a little bit. You know, the team stats going to tell you a little bit. The recap's going to tell you a little bit. A game that you didn't watch, the play-by-play tells you what really happened. And that's one that I want to go through to understand exactly how Air Force shut down Colorado's passing game. Because if they shut down Colorado's passing game, they can shut down Boise's passing game. If they shut down Boise's passing game, they're live dogs. If they can't, Boise will score over and over again. And this game may well go over the total. Uh, And that, to me, is the fundamental handicap for this ballgame. Air Force's secondary against the Boise State receivers. Interesting. I'm looking forward to the continuing analyzation or continuing to analyze that game. Let's move on to Florida International, La Tech. And, you know, there's I cut my action down quite a bit as I moved towards when I actually bet these games. And but, man, you guys were on so many right sides this past week. And La Tech was another one of them, you know, cashing as a big favorite, cashing so easily. And now they're at home. It opened at minus 10 at Pinnacle. It's now at minus 9, 8.5 at Heritage, 9.5 at Bookmaker, 10 at Bet Online. So the market all over the place here. Does Louisiana Tech take care of business again against Florida International? And that's why we love betting on Mondays. The markets, it's not a mature market. You can get a 9.5 over here and a 10.5 over there, and it makes a huge difference. Again, we talk about all of these half-point decisions and, oh, what a bad beat. Well, if the bad beat ends up being a bad push, you don't feel quite as bad about it. You know, uh, I encourage you, don't be shy about getting involved on Monday, even in games where your opinion isn't that strong. If you see the market moving and you can get a number that is better than the broader market, you can decide what you want to do with it later in the week. You can bet back the other way. You can hold it. You have positive expectation situations regardless, as long as you're timing your bets correctly. And you can do that. If you're just watching the SBR live odd screen on the odd screen on um, Monday morning, you can see it's nine and a half here. It's ten and a half there. Where's the broader market? Where's Penny leaning? You know, uh, where are the you know, Westgate leaning? Where are the books, the, the books that cater to wise guy betters? Because that's the direction the markets are going to move. And that's one uh, that you can take that you can take advantage of every week. Uh, and it's a real b- bonus for checking out the SBR odds page. It should be bookmarked and you should have that up all morning long or whatever you should have it up all the time <laughs> if uh there aren't many betters i know that don't have a live on their odd screen running somewhere uh on their computers at, you know all day long uh makes it easy to, uh, to check in and refresh and see what's moving when it comes to la tech and fiu la tech was very cheaply priced last week against a very bad team and they ended up taking a fair bit of money before kickoff and the uh, markets aren't necessarily you know the opening line they've given a little bit of respect uh, for La Tech. Look, my number was 11 uh, in this ballgame. So my number says you just ride the Bulldogs. But again, when you talk about coaches and their roles, we don't love Holtz in this home chalk role. We like him much better in the road dog role, even the road favorite role. Um, this hasn't been, the, you know, when we talk about Rustin as being a tough place to play, hasn't been in recent years. And they're coming off a blowout win over a team that's absolute garbage. FIU is bad, but they're not absolute garbage. So my numbers, you know, says Louis, uh, that uh, La Tech's the play here. I haven't bet it yet, and I'm not convinced that I will. Interesting. I love having Teddy on the show every week and then having, or every day, all week, and then having all the cappers bringing in their insights in the chat. It's, uh, it's a recipe for glory, and I hope that we can continue this glory <laughs> as we move forward. Okay, questions coming in. First off, Big Ragu says, Teddy, ask Teddy about ASU defense. And what happened to Michigan State? I was wrong. That's what happened. I mean, Michigan, the two things, all right? Arizona State played way better defensively than I thought they were, than I thought they would. Um, And that was me being wrong. That was me not, that was a flat out wrong handicap on my part. I should have seen it and didn't. And that's my fault. The other part of it was that Sparty's offense stunk. And I don't know that I saw that coming. They have playmakers. They just got to get the ball in their hands. But the offensive line was destroyed. Their receivers uh, couldn't find separation. The work he wasn't good. Uh, and uh, <laughs> they had uh, a problem with too many men on the field. So uh, it was, a, you know, if, if I'm going to be wrong, I'd much, in some ways, I'd much rather be wrong, especially on a good day. I think a lot of us had a good day on Saturday. And Michigan State was the one, uh, literally the one that I was wrong. And I'd rather be wrong 
and say, all right, I was wrong on this and take the loss and you don't, you're not sweating it, then be right and get slapped in the face at the end of the game. Those are so hard uh, to handle, especially on a winning day. So uh, that being said, the bad loss for Sparty, man, there could be value with that team moving forward. I have not given up on Michigan State by any stretch of the imagination. I do think that team has the potential to make their backers money as the season progresses. And Arizona State is them just for them being a top 25 team. Where the Pac-12 has six top 25 teams this week, which tells you of all of all the stupid things there are, the top 25 might be the single stupidest. There's a, there aren't six Pac-12 teams that are amongst the top 25 teams in college football this year. Not even maybe. Not even double maybe. Uh, and Arizona State getting a fair bit of love uh, in the polls and in the markets this week. Again, they just covered his double-digit dogs. And that's another one that I miss, is that Herm Edwards hasn't lost a race. He's seven road games at Arizona State. He hasn't lost any of them by more than a touchdown. That's the way I'm going to look for Arizona State moving forward. Even wish the Frosh QB, I'll look to take points with this team on the highway. They've proven they're pretty good in that role. Hmm. And that kind of rolls into our question from AM. says, can you ask Teddy his thoughts on the under this weekend in Michigan State Northwestern? Uh, whew, that's a good question. Let, let me see. Do we have any totals up? No. Cirque's put up. Uh, yeah, no, we have, we have totals here in Vegas. Okay. Uh, what's that game number, you know, offhand? Michigan State. I go look. Give me a second. I will find a total because I really, I really haven't even considered the totals yet. Uh, that's usually a Tuesday thing for me. 38 and a half. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I do not bet college football under 38 and a half. I just don't do it. The game is too long. So it makes sense, but I, I don't. I mean, again, that's just one book. Sir posts up, uh, posted up first. But, you know, at 40 or less, you're not going to get me involved in an under in, uh, an under in college football. And, and frankly, I don't know, <laughs> Northwestern can't score either. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, if uh, Sparty I, – I think Sparty is better on offense than what we just saw. And I wouldn't be surprised if they end up being – you know, we're all said and done if they're an over team. But – Antonio's not an over coach, <laughs> uh, but with totals at 38 and a half, they could be an over team before this uh, all said and done this year. That total's really low. Very, very, very low. Doing some copying and pasting here. Capo Don, I got you, man. I'll hit you uh, after the show. That leads us into Guru Sports Bets question. Then we have more game questions, but this is a little different. He says, Teddy, what books? Do you consider wise guy books? We've heard what you think are in Vegas. What do you think? Or is that maybe the question? Sorry, Guru, are you talking about wise guy books in Vegas? Let me get some, let me get some clarity on that question before I, before I, I ask you. I both. Yeah, because I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's an excellent question to ask. Say, what, I, I always talk about leading indicator books, okay? Like uh, the, the, just what we talk about in the stock market, the leading indicators for what's going to happen in the economy six months or nine months or 12 months uh, down the road. With sports books, it's not hard to figure out. I'll show you what my list is right here, okay? What I call the leading indicator books, all right? I got Penny. I got uh, Bookmaker, Bet Chris. I have Heritage and Grande. That's what I use for offshore. And when the money moves at those books, the money's going to move broader overall. In Vegas, I got Westgate, Caesars, Circa, and South Point. Those eight books are literally leading indicator books. Globally. So if you track those eight sports, I'm going to read them again. Pinnacle, Bookmaker, Heritage, Grande, in, uh, Offshore, Westgate, Caesars, Circa, South Point here in Vegas. Those eight books, if you track them, and I keep them on my screen separately, you track the, the numbers for those eight books, compare to the broader markets, and you compare that to what Sports Interaction is hanging or Bovada is hanging uh, or what William Hill is hanging, uh, what coasts and stations are hanging here in Vegas. Those are books that cater to recreational betters. So when you track your books on your wise guy books on one side of the screen and your recreational books on the other side of the screen, you see the disparity very, not on every game, but fairly consistently. And you can see where the broader market is likely to move just by tracking those uh, leading indicator books. So uh, excellent question, not a stupid question at all. And it doesn't matter, Vegas offshore, I track both. Beautiful, that was a very, very, very interesting. We're all taking notes as fast as we can. Next question comes from our guy, Brody. Brody's also with you in the Michigan spot, uh, believing in... Oh, sorry. I mean the Michigan State spot. Sorry, I say Michigan there. No, sorry. 
Brody's with you in the Michigan spot against Wisconsin. Brody agrees with you on the plus three and a half. And he has a question here. He says, ask Teddy about Colorado, Arizona State. And that is a late game out west. Arizona State opening at minus seven and a half. Pinnacles dropped it to seven. There are still a couple books at seven and a half. Teddy, early look, Colorado, Arizona State. So my number's eight. So my number favors the Sun Devils. That being said, we talk about we talked about this a lot last week, and I'm going to talk about it all year long in college football. Recognize the change of roles. Arizona State, great bet last week at plus 16 and a half or 16 at kickoff. Double-digit dog. Now they're laying more than a touchdown, and that's wholly different from what we saw. That being said, I don't know if I trust Colorado's defense to get any stops in this game. <laughs> uh, you know, one team can get stops, one team can't. Uh, and like I said, my number came out higher than the number uh, in the marketplace this morning. So I could, I'm only going to look at the Arizona State side here, but I really – I'm going to look at it. I doubt I get to the betting window with Arizona State this week. I want them catching points on the road, not laying points at home, and not laying more than a touchdown against a team with explosive receivers who can, in theory, come, come in through the back door. Eddie Euler asking about the possibility of a Big 12 shootout, OK State. Texas, what do you think there? You think that we're going to get an over in business when these two teams meet? And we watched the Broncos take care of business. We know that they've had Texas's number in the last few years. What is your expectation, Oklahoma State, Texas? Yeah, let me just find the game. Oh, there it is. Sorry. Uh, So my number came Texas eight and a half, which is is much higher than the broader market. The total, the early total, 70 and a half for Okie State and Texas. Okie State fraudulent cover uh, against Tulsa. Tulsa was right in that game. But Tulsa moved the football against Oklahoma State's defense. That's definitely a concern for me. You know, Texas defense got lit up by Oklahoma. Everyone's defense getting lit up. Uh, or not with Oklahoma, by uh, who did Texas love? Uh, by uh, LSU. Everyone's defense getting lit up by LSU. Texas defense will get lit up by Oklahoma. <laughs> in addition, is Oklahoma up next for Texas? That's something that's worth checking. Uh, I don't think that's probably till the first week of October. Let me just look real quick at uh, what the Longhorns have up next. West Virginia before Oklahoma. They have a bye, then West Virginia, then Oklahoma. So uh, that's not for uh, a little while, the Red River shootout. Um, total. He's asking about specifically the total of this game. I like Texas. I, I, I like Texas. I'm a Texas believer. Uh, Okie State with the late touchdown, you know, and they were just trying to run out the clock and ended up costing Tulsa backers a lot. But I'm not sold on that Cowboys defense at all. Uh, which does bode well for an over. Uh, I don't know that Okie State has the type of playmakers on offense they've had in recent years. I really don't. You know, you don't see the, you know, Jason, uh, James Washington's and Mason Rudolph's and the guys that are going to be first and second round NFL. I, I don't know if they have that on, on this year's roster. Um, I don't know if I'm answering the question. I'm still thinking. Clearly, I'm still thinking about the game. Uh, sorry. Ask me again a little bit later in the week. And I'll have a stronger opinion. Right now, the, you know, the gears are just turning. So uh, I apologize for not having a full, but I'm not going to apologize because there's a lot of games that I'm not going to have a full take on first thing Monday morning. I'm thinking about it. The gears are grinding. And as the week progresses and as the information comes out, well, we'll see if I have a stronger opinion on some of these. Uh, Again, my first lean was towards Texas. I thought the number was a little bit cheap. Total wise, I haven't really considered it yet. So uh, I don't want to give you an opinion now that later in the week, I'm like, no, no, I didn't mean that. Uh, Right now, the total for me is a no opinion. It's fun. It's exciting watching it develop and watching the ideas develop throughout the work that you put in all week. So we love we love watching it, watching roll. I lost with Tulsa. If I hadn't a lot in that that touchdown breaking through there, uh, I was upset. But I would have been twelve and three going into the late games had that not happened. So it was I. We were on some real nice looks last week, and I expect to keep it rolling right now i expect to keep it rolling right now more questions coming in more questions coming in one is uh is do we back oregon do we back oregon this is from our guy raymond in class capping right now that's how much raymond wants it oregon minus ten and a half do we continue to fade stanford teddy well, I'm, I'm tempted i'm disappointed in the number though i thought maybe we lay a touchdown here stanford is banged up i mean if you watch the ucf game you know exactly what i'm talking about their offensive line is banged up their front seven on defense. I mean, they, they have any healthy linebackers now. Uh, it's going to be a problem for Stanford moving forward. And 
we've seen, I mean, basically David Shaw changed his entire recruiting tactic about three years into his tenure at Stanford when they were beating everyone, beating everyone, beating everyone and not beating Oregon. And he's like, we need faster guys on D. And he literally changed the whole style of players they were recruiting on defense just for Oregon. And they competed fairly well with Oregon in years past. So um, I don't want any part of Stanford. It's Oregon or pass for me, but I'm not convinced the price is right in this one. Big difference, Stanford. Uh, you know, uh, I was I laid, what, seven or seven and a half of them with UCF uh, at home. And now Stanford's double-digit home dogs, you know, in Florida, uh, playing in the heat. And I'll tell you what, Stanford in that game, they got their asses kicked and they still impressed me because despite all the adversity, despite all the, I mean, they had a, nothing went right for them in that ball game early. They came out in the second half and they played hard and they made things interesting. And for a minute with UCF, you were sweating there. You're like, am I going to have to sweat this game? And then UCF came back and scored one more touchdown. It didn't matter. But Stanford way behind, didn't quit, came out and played. That's a positive sign moving forward. That's a character statement for a team that is facing a lot of adversity right now. So uh, I guess it's a long answer for me saying I'm probably going to pass the game, but I, I still don't want Stanford to be Oregon or pass, but the price isn't right. Interesting. We'll continue talking about that game throughout the week. And then we all cashed on UCF, and a lot of us cashed also on Pittsburgh. And now they meet UCF. This this move has already gone. We've already seen a two point move at Pinnacle, two and a half point move at other books. Pittsburgh opening at plus ten, now plus twelve at Pinnacle. Do we back UCF again? Can Pittsburgh slow down UCF? What are your what are your early angles on UCF Pittsburgh? Boy, I'm disappointed in this point spread. You know, I am. Uh, I think UCF's going to roll them. Uh, I think UCF's going to roll everybody. Um, that's a mission team, and they're good. Uh, but my number seven and a half, and I've got UCF price pretty high. Uh, but this is a team, again, once a team gets a buzz, UCF has buzz right now, and then they have a blowout win over a supposedly quality foe on national TV, the time has come and maybe gone with UCF. There, right? If you've been riding them for the last year and a half, you made a whole bunch of money. This price range is telling me that UCF has officially gone into the stratosphere. Again, my number seven and a half, and I'm high on UCF. Uh, so the number's clearly too high for me. If you're going to bet it, you don't want the dog. You know, this is a this is a deal where until the markets show they've caught up with UCF, you keep riding them. But the markets are showing me they caught up with UCF here. It's not a game I'm going to bet. Not a game you're going to bet. Well, why don't we put a bow on this show with what looks to be the game of the weekend, Notre Dame, Georgia, Georgia, 13 and a half favorites, big favorites. Can Notre Dame stay within the spread, Teddy? It's a lot of points for a good Irish team, you know, um, for a real good Irish team. Uh, you know, I'm not, uh, I will not sell Notre Dame. Sure. That's a lot of points, but you know, and I, I wish they wouldn't have killed New Mexico, <laughs> you know, uh, but that's a good offense. Uh, the Irish tried to step up in class in the uh, playoffs last year and didn't work well. And at times, even in the, you know in in recent years when they faced the elites of the elites, Notre Dame has come up very short. And Georgia is not a team I have a whole lot of interest in stepping in front of. But in this point spread range. Uh, again, where's my number on this game? Uh, where the hell's that game? Georgia. I, I know it came through. It came a little bit. My number came 12. And at 14, I'm, I might well be a buyer on Notre Dame. I'm going to wait. I'm not in a rush. Uh, but at plus 14, it would be, I would look. But again, like we talked about last week, the Alabamas, the Clemsons, the Ohio States, the Georgia, the top five teams, it's really hard to bet on them. And it's really hard to bet against them because they are that good. And they're being priced as that good. So I don't tend to get a lot involved in a lot of these games, especially when it comes to betting against these elite teams. But, I mean, 14 with Notre Dame is, is something I would be interested in uh, at, first, at first glance. It makes it it's something I'd be interested in. And then there's been a ton of talk. I know we got to 
put a end on uh, put a bow on this bad boy. But uh, there's been a lot of talk in the chat about how strong LSU is. Some of the captains in the chat say that right now, right now, they're the best college football team in the country and they're going up against Vanderbilt no pass defense whatsoever they've are it's already moved two points in LSU's direction L, or a point and a half excuse me LSU opening up at minus 22 and a half at Pinnacle now minus 24 does LSU put a beating on Vandy on the road here or can Vandy stay within the number LSU might put a beating on them you know there's there's little I mean my number came 27 and a half <laughs> all right I don't want the dog in this one uh, and it's an, uh, you know, I don't know whether LSU's got to go for the jugular mentality on the highway in the same way. You know, it's one thing in the, uh, in the in the game against Texas where it was back and forth, back and forth. I don't know what they're going to do when they have a four touchdown lead in the fourth quarter of these games. Are they going to push? Are they going to push? Or is it going to be, uh, oh, let's chill out. Let's get ready for the next game. Big difference when you're in this point spread range how your team approaches the fourth quarter of a blowout win. And I don't know that for yet for LSU. So I'm, again, my number says LSU or nothing. Let's see if we find something during the week that says the focus will be there for 60 minutes. If it is, maybe that's the way to play. But who's LSU got next? That's something that's always worth checking. Oh, a bye week, which means nothing to look forward to. But also, you oftentimes see teams fall asleep in the second half with the bye week on deck. I don't view that necessarily as a positive sign for LSU in this point spread range this week. Interesting. So then would you say if you were going to back LSU, it would be first half only? If I was going to back LSU, it would be Monday. I'd do it right now because that line can only go up. I like it. I Senate's like it. Is, is there any angle, is there any game that you are very, that you find very appealing that we should start studying and, and working on for tomorrow or for Wednesday's show? Is there, is there any game that you like that we should get to work on? Oh, you want to see uh, the, the stuff, <laughs> stuff that I've leaned? Uh, leaned to Appalachian State uh, off the opener. Uh, I thought Auburn was really cheap. Uh, you know, Auburn getting four at A&M, I thought that was too many, I should say. I thought Missouri was a little bit cheap. Uh, I'm interested in betting. I know that Kansas was – I was dead wrong about Kansas last week. I'm interested in betting them again this week. I thought Washington's cheap at BYU. You know I love Michigan uh, already. Uh, my power rating has Michigan as a favorite in that ballgame. I'm going to take a look at BC against Rutgers in a bounce back spot. I'm going to take a look at Western Michigan plus the points in a bounce back spot. Uh, um, I've got Kent. I don't know if I'm going to get the Kent over Bowling Green. We talked about SMU last week. They're a team on my list. I had Oregon on my list initially, Notre Dame. And, of course, Louisville uh, is another one. So that's just a handful of stuff that that's jumped out to me off the page initially. So you can ask me about any or all of those tomorrow if you want. I think we talked on some of them today, but uh, there's plenty more. I was feverishly writing them down. So we are we are in business there. <laughs> Teddy Covers, what a treat it is to roll with you here at Betting with a Bag every morning. We absolutely love it and love getting the questions coming in. Very exciting. We're coming off a great, 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 great week. Do you feel like early in the season our edges are bigger because of the off-season studying that you guys have been doing? Mm, yes and no. I, I mean... The betting marketplace is changing as we speak, okay? And what I'm seeing in the college football betting marketplace is that there's a lot more influence for stuff that I think has nothing to do with what's actually going on in college football. You know, the actual matchups on the field, the actual the offense coordinator against this defense coordinator, this defense coordinator against this offense coordinator. Those are the matchups, the talent-wise matchups. And people are always looking for shortcuts in college football. You know, it's all about, oh, how, well, uh, how do we handicap 60 games in five minutes? You know, no. If you put the time in, <laughs> you can find edges. Uh, and I think in college football, in the modern marketplace, with the fact that there's so much crap out there, if you do the work, you should make money. I'm not surprised that a lot of people won last weekend. I'm not surprised that I won last weekend. I expect to win this time of year. But the nuances of college football change dramatically from September to the start of conference play in October, to the middle of conference play, into November, where things, I mean, each period of the season has its own unique nuances that for beginning betters, you don't see it, you don't get it. And that's something that I'm hoping I'm going to help you help as the season progresses is what's different about betting, you know, week five compared to week one. And it's completely different. <laughs> uh, but the work you do over the summer should pay dividends uh, over the course of the first 
uh, two, three, four weeks of the college football season. I hope you did. I hope you made money. And it's been a good couple of weeks. Uh, I'm not going to complain. Let's put it that way uh, in my life. I love it, Teddy. I absolutely love it. Thank you so much for joining us, man. Have a great Monday and can't wait to see you tomorrow morning.